to do to Allah. We start with the name of Allah, Ar Rahman, Ar Rahim. We say Bismillah, Ar Rahman, Ar Rahim. In the name of Allah, the most merciful, the most kind, this one, this merciful Lord that has given us the mercy of Iman. He has given us the mercy of faith, and we haven't asked for faith, and He has given, He has blessed us with faith without us asking. This merciful Lord has allowed us to, to achieve the acts of worship without us asking to do them. This merciful Lord has allowed us to have an opinion of Him that He is merciful and that He will continue to, to grant His mercy unto us. We know the, the, famous, uh, the famous hadith Qudsi where Allah says, and it's by the wording of the Prophet where Allah says, that I am according to the opinion of my servant. And so we have the opinion of that Allah is merciful towards us. And then, then uh, if we have that opinion of Allah, Allah will be merciful towards us. If we have the opinion of Allah, that He will allow us to continue to have the tawfiq, the grace to continue on this on this iman, on this faith that He has given us, and for it not to be taken from us, Allah will, uh, inshallah, allow us to continue that faith without us asking. But that doesn't mean we shouldn't ask. It doesn't mean we shouldn't ask for an increase in faith, an increase in our actions. It doesn't mean that we shouldn't ask for an increase in our spiritual states. It doesn't mean that we shouldn't ask the al -raza. Because Allah likes to hear us ask. We have Ramadan coming in 11 or 12 days. Less than two weeks. Ramadan is almost here. We ask that Allah allows us to, to reach Ramadan and to bless the remainder of our Sha'ban. We ask Allah that He allows us to find the spiritual benefit of Ramadan. And a lot of times we find ourselves questioning, how come I find a higher spiritual state in Ramadan? Or sometimes we know people who don't pray except in Ramadan, who don't do acts of worship except in Ramadan, who don't read Quran outside of Ramadan. And sometimes we look down upon those people. We look down upon those people. And we question their faith. And we question their sincerity. But before we do that, let's let's think about the hadith of Abdullah and Sayyidi radiallahu anhu ta'ala. He was one of the scribes of the Prophet. It's a famous hadith, it's in it's in it's reported in many, many books of hadith. And one morning, Hamdala radiallahu anhu wakes up and says, Nafaqa Hamdala. Hamdala has had, is a hypocrite. He says that about himself. The, the Sahabi, this great, the, the, one of the, the, the greatest of creation after the Prophet of the Sahaba. And he says that, that I've, I've, committed, I've committed hypocrisy. So he goes and he, he runs to Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu. It's a long hadith, but he runs to Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu and says, Ya, ya Abu Bakr, nafaqa hamdara. Hamdara has, hamdara has committed hypocrisy. And he says, why is that? He said, when, we're, when I'm in the company of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, I find myself in a higher spiritual state. I find myself, you know, he, he describes he describes the acts that, 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 that the, the, the cognizance he has of Allah with him. And so Abu Bakr al-Dhan says, I have the same problem. When I'm at the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, I'm at a certain state, and when I'm away from him, I'm not at that state. So they go, both of them, to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they, they narrate this to him. And he says, that he, in base, the, the, the summary of the, this is a longer hadith, the summary of the hadith that the Prophet ﷺ says that when you're with me, of course, your, your state of iman and your actions are going to be greater and have, and have a greater impact on you. And had you remained on what you were doing in my company, the angels themselves would have came down and shook their hands with you. But they said, sa'at and fasa'at, and you know, bit by bit. Things, we, 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 we aren't going to achieve a high spiritual state merely by uh, affirming it in ourselves or merely by asking or merely by getting into the Hajj one or two times or praying our five prayers on time or whatever it may be, reading some extra Quran in the day. So there are moments in our lives where we have more Iman. We have, we have a higher sense of Iman, more cognizance of Allah and His command, commandments and prohibitions more cognizance of, of, of our love for Allah and His Messenger and His love and His Messenger Sallallahu love for us. So when we have, when we reach Ramadan and we, we, we see these people who we might consider, we, we, there's a term for them, they call them Ramadan Muslims. We don't, we don't recognize that we ourselves are Ramadan Muslims. In Ramadan, our own, we, we also 
find an increase and perhaps that state in which they're in or that state that which we find ourselves in in that, in that Ramadan or whatever whatever time of Barakah that it may be whether it be Ramadan or whether it be the times of time of Hajj or whether it be during your times of prayer or when you're reading Quran those are times when we're supposed to find an increase those are times where we're supposed to find an increase so when we find someone who perhaps hasn't prayed all year who hasn't opened the Quran in, in, in a long time who hasn't Start to make some dhikr or some fikr, some, some contemplation about Allah and His creation. We should encourage those people and help those people. And so long as, and we know in the hadith that the Prophet, that the Prophet said that Allah is in, is, is in the assistance of His servant so long as his, his servant is in the assistance of His brother. So if we assist those people who find difficulty outside of Ramadan, who find difficulty outside of the quote-unquote spiritual times of the year or times of the day, Allah might continue to allow us to have an increase in Iman, and allow us to have an increase in, in our faith and in our actions. We know the Prophet ﷺ None of you truly believe, you haven't reached complete faith, until you love for yourself what you love for your brother. Do we not love Iman for ourselves? Do we not love that Allah have mercy on us? Do we not love that Allah continue to be on Razaf, to be, to be the, the one who provides for us? We should also love that for our brothers and sisters in our faith and for our families and help those people who might be struggling in whatever way of wisdom that it may be without overwhelming them. You know, we help them first reach their, the bare minimums and after that we increase, we increase them bit by bit. And if we do that, and we love that for ourselves, and we love that for them, perhaps we'll reach a higher state of Iman. Perhaps Allah will continue to assist us in our Iman and our actions through our help for another person. That he might, Allah might increase his love for, uh, the, the, our love for Allah might be increased because we help someone else increase their love for Allah. Because we help someone else increase their love for Allah and his messenger, so Allah may send them. So we're all Ramadan Muslims. We're all people who find bit of a spiritual boost during Ramadan and during the other, during the other uh, times of the day or the year or the week or whatever it may be, Jum'ah, we find ourselves, you know, we're, we're more well dressed, we're a bit excited to go to Jum'ah, you know, we, we, perhaps throughout the rest of the week we, it might be a little bit difficult to go to the masjid, but we find it easier on ourselves to go to the masjid during on Fridays. These all are, these all are indications of, 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 the, of this idea that there are times when our faith is going to be a bit stronger. And we should continue on that and, 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 and ride that wave and allow it to continue to build our good habits. So with this month coming, with, with, first of all, with this month ending, we should continue. Before Ramadan comes, we should prepare for Ramadan. This is, this is, a, this is a religion in which we, we put forth uh, we put forth preliminaries before we, before we reach something else. If you want, if you want, uh, if you want presence in your prayer, you have to have presence in your wudu. If you want presence in your wudu, you should have presence in your intention before wudu, and so on and so forth. So we put preliminary. So if you want presence in Ramadan and a higher, uh, a higher spiritual state, a higher benefit from Ramadan, we should start now, and we should start helping people now. We should start helping our, our brothers and our sisters and our families and our children and our parents, if, if, if it may be. Whoever it may be that you might find that needs some sort of boost, we should start now. Allah says that this month of Ramadan is the month in which the Quran is revealed. No matter how much time you spend with the Quran every single day, or if we don't spend time with the Quran every single day, it's not, we haven't done enough. And we should never assume that we're ever going to do enough. And that shouldn't discourage us. 
it should actually encourage us that even though we don't do enough, Allah is still Allah is still going to to to, to reward us for the very for the very little that we do. The righteous predecessors, and even even people today, when Ramadan comes, they double what they do. If we're not doing anything, uh, if we're not, they double their good actions, especially with the Quran. Double how much Quran they they recite. If we're not doing anything now, we should start now and then double it if we can when Ramadan comes. Whether it be a few minutes a day, or if you're doing however may, however much it may be, that you can that you can reasonably finish without without straining yourself. We should start. We should start that now. So we build the habit. So when Allah comes, we 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 build a closer connection to the to the words of Allah. And sometimes we don't recognize the blessings that these are these are the words of Allah. Allah is expressing His pre-eternal speech in this Quran. And he has a message to tell us. And Allah is, Allah is, as our beloved, if, do, do we not want to know what our beloved is telling us? If we don't understand the Quran and that, that discourages us from reading, that's fine. There's reward in reading the Quran, even if you don't understand. So we should start now. And perhaps we might say, well, I don't, I don't find like a, a, I don't find the spiritual, I don't find the spirituality, I don't, I don't find whatever it may be, I don't find like, a, Enjoyment in reading the Quran. Alam Abu Siri says in his word, "Al Hamdu Kum Ainu, Lo Al Shamsi Min Al Maliha, Wa Yamki Al Thamu Ta'ala Min Dali Min Sallami." That perhaps we have a problem when we don't find a benefit from the Quran. That sometimes the eye might not see the sunlight because of something that's covering it. Perhaps the mouth might not like the taste of what it drinks or the water it drinks because of something that's wrong with the tongue. Similarly, if we don't if we don't like the Quran, if we don't like our time in the Quran. This, this, is, this is a reminder of us to do hard work. We should continue to work on ourselves. We should continue to work on ourselves. As, as in Ramadan, we spend extra time getting up before Fajr to make sure that our bodies are nourished. We could also add a few minutes to make sure our souls are nourished. We pray a few minutes about God while everyone else is still asleep. Just as we, just as we give the effort into our bodies, we should do the same for our souls. Our souls are more important than our bodies. We ask Allah that he allows us to be people who have nourished soul. We ask Allah that he allows us to be people who, who build a relation with his words. We ask Allah that, we have, that he makes people who love the Quran and love Allah and love his messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa We ask Allah that he gives us an increase of faith in this, in this coming month. We ask Allah that he allows us to reach this month. We ask Allah that he allows us to, to, to have grace, to have to think to continue on this faith that he's given us. We ask Allah that this faith never leave us and never decrease from us. We ask Allah that we, we have an increase in the quality and the quantity of our actions. We ask Allah that, be, that, that we be people who see no happiness except through what Allah has given us. We, we ask Allah that we find no peace except through Him. So we say, Allahumma anta salam, wa minka salam, tabarakta yadam, jalai wa ikram, hayina wa adkhina dama salam, rabbana atina fi dunya hasana, wa fi al-akhirati hasana, wa fi al-adab al-nar, rabbana, rabbana abana min azwajina wa dhuriyatina kurrata ayin, wa ja'ana li muttaqina imama. We ask Allah that He has mercy in our teachers, especially our first teachers, our parents. We ask Allah that He, that we, he allows us to recognize that Allah, His angels, send their benedictions and salutations to the Prophet and that we're asking the same. Inna Allah wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala nabi Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima Allahumma salli ala sayyidina wa habibina wa kurrati ayunina Muhammad wa ala ali sayyidina Muhammad wa ala azwaji sayyidina Muhammad wa ala atba'i sayyidina Muhammad wa ala ashabi sayyidina Muhammad wa ala ummati sayyidina Muhammad wa ala ahbabi sayyidina Muhammad wa barik wa sallim wa salli alayhi inna Allah yakur bin ajri wa ihsani wa minta ahdu al-kurma wa yata ahdu al-fahshani wa al-kumkri wa al-nagi واذكروا الله يذكركم ودعوه يستجب لكم ولذكر الله يذكر الله يعلم ما تصنعون واقيموا الصلاه